because if it's already a hit, you know what I mean? I don't. Do you think they would even include it like a bonus track, Dave? Well, here's the thing, Dave. Like, there's not albums anymore. I, I mean, know. there well, are albums, but like, it's not an all or nothing. Right. So, you know, like, but I guess the question is, well, I don't know, like even like downloading albums, people aren't doing anymore. I mean, it's all streaming. You can pick the songs you want. I mean, in the old days, I would totally agree with you. I would say, look, they know they have a bona fide hit on their hands. Right. Okay. Wolf wasn't planning on putting that song on the album, but the record companies would probably be like, Wolf, this song got so much traction. How can you not put it on the album now? Right. Right. We know conceptually you weren't thinking about putting it on the album, but now you got it, even as a bonus track. But now with streaming being the way that people consume music, does it even matter anymore? I don't I don't know that it matters so much anymore now. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. I just so I hear what you're saying, but let me put it to you this way. If Wolf was really you know, wanted to put his foot down and said, no, I didn't want him on the album before. I don't want it on the album now. I think he has more of a case of a reason to support that because if, if you want to hear it, you could just stream it. Right. And, you know, and, and you know, Dave, you do this all the time. Yeah. People can make playlists whenever yeah. they want. No, you're so right. If it's you're right, right, if it's not on the album, you make a playlist and you pretend it's on the album. <laughs> exactly. Or, right. If it's on the album and you don't like the song, then you make a playlist without that song on it yeah i mean there's right you know this yeah. there's so much flexibility yeah. now that's true so i i almost think that, like it almost really doesn't matter yeah that's a I, good point I, it's a good point it's a very good point so now he was shocked by distant success he said first of all the reaction has been so crazy i couldn't have seen this coming he told loudwire nights and it even topped the Billboard's hot, hard rock song charts. And he says, I think what's so important to me is from what everyone's been saying is how much they can relate to it with how awful 2020 has been of a year and how many people have lost someone important to them. I think the message of the song is really resonating with a lot of people. And I think that's what kind of touched me the most out of the whole process. And when they asked, how is he going to play it live? He said, in order to play it, I have to get into that space. I really haven't been able to fully play it on my own, just by myself. Playing it certainly is going to take some separation in my head in order to play it properly. So he's planning on putting it in the set list, but obviously it's an emotional track for him to perform. Sure. I, I mean, absolutely. But I think, you know, he's got a hit on his hands, so it's almost like, how do you not? Right. Now, interesting enough, someone asked him about David Lee Roth. So obviously, if you remember last year around this time, this is when we were getting ready to go to Vegas and Dave was doing press and he was talking about I'm the face of Van Halen from this point on. You remember that whole line, right? Yep, so yep. that was last fall. So some midday jock on the Tucson, Arizona station, KFMA. I think the guy's name is Razor. He asked him about this comment, you know. So Wolf said, I guess to a certain extent, Dave has all the right in the world to play the Van Halen songs he was part of. So I don't see any problem with that. There's such a wide breadth of what the Van Halen catalog is than just him. So it might be a little weird to say that he's the face of it. <laughs> Very diplomatic, I, this young man. Yeah, that was Wolf. He wasn't taking a dig at Dave, yeah. but he wasn't. He was definitely putting him in check. Not ne well, he was not necessarily agreeing with Dave's position, like he's the face of the band, right? Right. Yeah. But you know, so I, I get what he was saying. It was Wolf saying, you know, just because Dave says that doesn't necessarily mean I agree with that. So. Right. So now, Sammy Hagar, the Red Rocker, was on Eddie Trunk Show, Trunk Nation on Sirius XM. And he went on there, what was he going on there for? To promote his birthday bash, which was having an encore showing, I believe it was the night before Thanksgiving. So he talked a little bit about his birthday. So what he did was, although he always plays Cabo Wabo on his birthday, he actually had the, the pay-per-view. It was this special this year, right? 
Well, this sneaky bastard, you know Sam, he's a ham. <laughs> he had a sneak into Cabo Wabo on his actual birthday, which is October 13th. And he played for an hour and a half with an acoustic guitar for, and entertained the audience. Now, in order to not cause pandemonium, Dave, they had to lock the doors because there was a line of people trying to get in once they heard Sam was in there. Also, he told Eddie about when he heard about the passing of Eddie Van Halen. So he said it was Irving Azoff who called him, which is Van Halen's manager. He said it was like a loss of a family member, not just some guy I know. It felt much stronger than I even imagined it would. Then he gave us a little insight as to what was going on. So if you remember when Eddie passed, him and Mike were going down to Catalina Island to shoot this special for his birthday. Well, they were in rehearsal at the time, and he said, Mike and I couldn't almost play the Van Halen songs. So he started shuffling through the, the set list, and he said they started breaking down in the middle of the Van Halen songs. He said the songs were lifeless. It was hard to explain. But on the second day, they said, we got to pull this off. We got to do it for the right reasons. When I said, let's have a moment of silence, and the piano part came in for right now, I looked at Mikey and said, wow, let's go. We got work to do, which is to carry on the music. The songs had purpose. Sometimes through adversity, you get stronger. You dig in to some other place, and we did it. So he was very proud of that. He said the concert was very special to him, and he said, if he said anything about Ed, though, on the mic, he would have been choked up. He wouldn't have been able to talk. He says he hasn't really talked about it yet. And he says it's a real tough one. He says, I can't believe I'll never play with that guy again. I thought it was inevitable once we patched everything up at the first of the year. We were talking a lot and texting like teenagers. It was a love fest. All good stuff. And Ed said to him, when I'm feeling better, let's make some noise. We wrote some great songs together. Let's do it again. And I thought, this is great. This is going to happen. He was always reach out to Ed every like New Year's Eve. He would call Al or he would reach out on one of their birthdays, but he never heard back. Then what happened was the reason he actually got in touch with Ed, it was because of George Lopez, the comedian. And he saw Ed in February and he said, Sam, you got to call Eddie. He loves you, man. And he's having a hard time. You got to reach out. So Sam said, give me his phone number. And he said he left messages through Al and Irving Azoff. And then Eddie said, hey, why didn't you just call me? And he said he was a wise guy. He was giving him a little poke. He says, but they went on from there. And he said, Ed told him, please don't tell anybody about this. I don't want to stir up a reunion. Uh, and I don't want people to know about my health. And he, Sam said he didn't tell anybody. And he said that Ed told him, tell Mikey. I said, hey, and give him my love. I miss the guy. And then when he told Mike, Mike was like, what? <laughs> Which is kind of shocking. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That I hadn't heard yet. Yeah. That was always the big question was, did Ed and Mike ever reconcile? They never talked, but uh, apparently he did pass that message through Sam. I think what Wolf had said, I think it was in his Stern interview, that he said had Ed been alive, it would have happened like that fence would have been mended so right right i do remember wolf did say yeah. that in, in some interview right right, right right so now he talked about the kitchen sink tour and hagar said it was a totally on my radar no one had confirmed any of it but it was obviously what was going to happen i wouldn't look forward to having to share the stage with dave only because he's not user friendly i love the guy i love the music all that but he's just not user friendly he's always gonna pull something to try to make you look bad and make him look good and all that kind of stuff but it would have been a blast are you kidding me it would have been a dream come true so now when he got back to talking about the 2002 Sam and Dave tour, the song for song, the, the undisputed heavyweight champs of rock and roll, the longest title uh, of a tour in the world. <laughs> right. I'll never forget that. I mean, it's the clunkiest goddamn title I've ever seen. You've so, got to, like, take a breath when you're done oh, saying Oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So Sammy, <laughs> so Sammy said, I had been an advocate of doing a Sam and Dave tour from day one. You go all the way back to the first reunion when Dave went out with me that time for that tour. That was the idea of it. 
to get the Van Halen brothers' attention to do the reunion way back then and do it again and again and again. I mean, give the fans what they want. So that is proof that that whole tour was what that was. That is exactly what that was. Sam says it right here. That that tour was basically an audition for a joint Van Halen tour. Interesting. We said that all along, but I'm just saying it's interesting that Sam's, like, verifying it right, like, in clear day. He also said that this is the way I presented it to them two years ago. Actually, I presented it to Irving Azoff, their manager and my old manager. I said, Irving, I'll come out and do two songs, leave the stage. Dave comes out and does two. He leaves the stage. I come out, do two, 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 like that. Not like one guy has to open the show for the first hour and then the other guy comes out for the second hour and then you got to flip-flop all this kinds of crazy stuff that Roth would always insist upon because it should either be chronological, Roth comes out and does the whole thing, I come out and do my whole thing, and then Gary Sharon comes out for the encore. <laughs> I can't believe that is crazy. It seems like the only way to do it properly you don't think that each one of us would have freaking sucked it up and given 135,000% trying to blow the other guy off the stage song after song? It would have been the greatest thing ever. Now, the interesting thing is, Dave, this is what I find a little curious, and no one seems to have pointed this out. So do you remember Sam was putting space in his tour for Mikey to leave and go do the Van Halen reunion? If he was going to be part of that, what was that all about? I mean, no one seems to talk about this. There was yeah, no, no talk I'm trying, of so Sam. I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to think it through my head. So, yeah, the, the line was always, if Mike needed it for the Van Halen tour, he was giving Mike the time. But if it was going to be this joint tour, right. then wasn't he really giving Mike and himself the summer? For the tour. But wait a second, though. Well, let's go back. I mean, we talked about this on the podcast, okay? He took a break in his tour. He scheduled his tour last summer around, not this last summer, meaning 2020, the summer of 2019. The summer when he toured for The Space Between, right? Right. He literally booked the tour with an open space around it. So he toured like in the spring into the very, very early summer and then picked up like in September and went through the fall. And he was talking about, oh, well, I was leaving space for Mike to go do the Van Halen reunion. But it's like, wait a second. If you were going to be part of that, like, I don't think he was part of that. This is what I think was weird. There was never any talk of... Sam and Gary being part of that talk. There was talk about Van Halen doing a stadium show and Mike being on the tour with Wolf and having other bands on that. It just seemed a little erratic. And it's so funny, right. that T-shirt, by the way. The, the amount of bands they had on this thing was ridiculous. They had, like, Foo Fighters, Van Halen, Metallica. Like, that would have never happened. I mean, if they were going to do a joint, maybe they'd do one date with Foo Fighters, one date with Metallica. Like, to be honest with you, I don't even think those bands would need to do dates with Van Halen. Everybody keeps thinking that that thing was way closer than it was. I think that there was a theory and an idea, but I don't think... I mean, it yeah. just goes to prove to you, like, Mike got one call, like, hey, what do you think? But he never got anything past that. Yeah, I think it was an idea in someone's head. Yeah. And they were throwing some band names around, yeah. seeing if there was interest. Yeah. And somebody had it all on paper, but, I mean, it never even got to the planning stage. This yeah. was just no. all, like, hey, wouldn't this be a great idea? Right. And we've contacted a few people to gauge their interest. and. In my opinion, that's as far as it went. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing. What exactly do you do with Gary Sharon? I mean, how does that even work? Yeah, like, because, I mean, honestly, really. How are you going to come come out? How are you going to put this guy? Like, he's going to be like Mick Taylor was on the Rolling Stones. Not even. Not even. Not even. True, not even. Like, he's going to come out for one song. Yeah. Maybe they'll bring him out for the Grand Encore at the end. But that's it, right? And and the other thing, I mean, let's be honest, Sam and Dave, they both have like 
a catalog of hits. You could have done a spectacular show with the both of them. With the two catalogs together, it would have been, like, insane. But, I mean, you can't... Nothing against, you know, Gary or Van Halen 3, but, like, it's not going to fit. You know what I mean? I mean, and, and like I used to say, what are you going to do? Bring Gary out for, like, one or... 